Hello everyone, I am the Mastline Zone for you today doing yet another hammer tutorial. This time around I'm going to be showing you how you can use an entity called a logic case to go ahead and essentially make a pseudo random choice to allow a certain area of your game to open up or spawn or whatever. Now there's various methods of trying to trigger such events like on map spawn, on new round, when you press a button, when you enter a trigger for instance. But uh, just to clarify something, pseudo random, if we look into it, it says it's noting or pertaining to random numbers generated by a definite computational process to satisfy a statistical test. So it's essentially uh, kind of random, but it's not truly random. So it's like kind of random, I guess you can say if you want to. So here is my situation. We've got a bunch of these doors here. And I'm going to go ahead and load a logic case into this map. So if we go into it and take a look, it's a, something that looks like this. And we're going to Alt Enter to get into Properties. And I'm going to call it Door Case, like so. Now, for the logic case, you can select all sorts of different cases if you want to. And these would be certain entities, I'm guessing. But in our case, we don't really need to select anything there. So just leave it blank. And if we go into the outputs, if we look into it, you can see we've got all different cases up to a maximum of 16 for one case. And then there's other on user ones, which are in like pretty much every entity in any source game, I guess. So what we are going to do is say on the on case one. So if case one is picked, we're going to trigger door one to open, which is the far left door. Then on case two, as I spell case completely wrong, we are going to allow door two to open, which is this door over here to the right of the door on the very left. And then rinse and repeat for on case three and four to essentially trigger all these other doors to open if that specific case has been selected, like so. Now, of course, you can manipulate these cases to make one event occur more so than another. And essentially, you can allow uh, any percent of an event to happen just by utilizing logic cases. Now, one thing I want to sort of demonstrate is say, if you want to go for a, a percentage chance that you can't do with 16 logic cases, oh, sorry, 16 cases to one logic case. And you want to go to say i don't know a one in a hundred and you need to utilize many logic cases then what you can do is essentially use what i would like to call a master logic case and essentially what we're going to do now is actually go through the um, process of actually activating the case to begin with so if we go into our button here as you can see the first output is exclamation mark self lock so because the button does have a name I would just want to lock the button so people don't open all the doors. Then what we're going to do is select our door case and if we look into the inputs here the best option here is pick random. So it's just basically going to make a random selection out of any of the logic cases here. Now the case I'm trying to suggest is that if we have a master logic case then the output of the logic master logic case here would be to essentially pick random of these child cases where in these you actually have events to trigger if you catch my drift so essentially what i could do is say okay copy all this into here then we're going to call this i don't know uh door case two and then what we're going to do is under this logic case we're going to say on case one we want door case one to pick random and on case two we want door case two to pick random so that's essentially what you do so it picks random out of one of these and then all we have to do is then go into the button instead of door case we'd have the master case which is up here and it'll pick random between one of the logic cases that you have as a child and then it picks random of one of the events that's how you would go about doing it at the very least ladies and gentlemen so that is essentially how you create a kind of randomized uh, sort of pathway if you will so it's kind of like you have to have an idea of what to do 
and you could also use this for say level geometry if you want to have certain holes in the walls or the ceilings or the floors or whatever say in a counter strike map and you want to say add some variation to the map so it's not just static and you know there's a fixed methodology to learning the map but the level is kind of pseudo randomly dynamically generated so there's no one solution to get good at the map if it's well made at least you can have several different approaches and it depends on the random generation of the stage now of course that is going to be very 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 complicated to try and actually go ahead and implement but with the right people behind said project you could actually make something really interesting so that is kind of a unique idea or if you have a story perhaps then you can go ahead and branch path in this sort of fashion where you essentially have like three doors to go down and one randomly opens and that's the path you take so with all that being said and done ladies and gentlemen i'm going to be rounding off this tutorial here i hope you have found it helpful leave a like if you did or a dislike if you don't like the way i did it and let me know your feedback in the comments below i am out of here so thank you for watching and peace out see you next time